Hey witches, welcome back to the channel. This is Hectarios. So this is going to be our reading, tarot reading, not runes today, it's going to be tarot for um, the full moon coming up on April 29th, 2018. But this is also for the Walpurgis Night Sabbath, or also what's called May Eve, um, for April 30th, which is on Monday. So that's what this reading is for, since they pretty much are back to back. Um, I'm combining the reading together. So first, let's talk about the astrology. And once again, this is intuitive astrology. I'm not, uh, what's the word, a conventional astrologer or whatever the word is that I'm looking for there. Um, this is intuitive. So let me light an incense real quick. in my zone for a minute. I hope that you all have been doing well. Um, and welcome to all the new subscribers and viewers. I've noticed that my channel reached over 3,000 subscribers and I'm very humbled by that and thankful to be reaching so many people with these readings and um, the witchcraft knowledge and all of that. Um, thank you all for sharing the videos and liking and commenting and all of that. It really does help the channel grow and to reach more people. And that's what it's all about. So, okay. Into the astrology. By the way, this app is called the Star Chart app on Google. No, this is not an ad. Um, but everyone always asks me what I'm using. So, that's why I say it. So, what we have for... Can this focus? Okay, what we have for the 29th, we have the moon in Virgo, but it transitions into Libra basically throughout the day and into the 30th. So the full moon is the 29th once again, and the 30th is Walpurgis night. So what we have is the transition from the moon from Virgo into Libra. And as you can see in Libra, um, we have Jupiter there. And I believe Jupiter is a retrograde right now. So, um, let me show you the other planets real quick. What we have, um, most important really, oh shoot, is where the sun is at. Y'all, this app is very touchy. If you do download it, just putting that out there, you gotta be kind of like gentle. Um, so the sun is in Aries and basically Uranus is also there. That's the other major factor here. So what does this mean? Well, the sun in Aries, and this is a Vedic or side of real astrology, not tropical or Western astrology. Um, I follow where the planets are in the sky when you're looking with your naked eye. So uh, basically, just to summarize real quick on that, because a lot of people have been asking me that in the past videos too, um, the main difference between Western astrology and Vedic astrology is that Vedic astrology took into account the procession of the equinoxes where um, basically the position of the constellations in the sky thousands of years ago, um, it's not the same as it is today. So in Vedic astrology, we update and we go along with that procession. So that's just to summarize that real quick in case you wondered and wanted to know. Um, tropical astrology does not do that. It keeps the positions from thousands of years ago where the constellations are not occupying anymore in the sky. But okay, so the sun in Aries, this is an energy of new beginnings. This is the beginning of the zodiac wheel. So this is a rebirthing time. This is spring. This energy is about rebirth and renewal. Um, a resurgence of vitality into projects um, that maybe you have put to the side or had to um, 
you know, overlook for whatever reasons. This is the rebirthing of that energy and also new projects and new beginnings and new relationships as well. Um, Uranus is the energy of, you know, I really feel like I see lightning when I think of Uranus. So this is like those inspirations and insights coming in. And as I showed you, um, Uranus and the sun are right there together. So, uh, this energy will come in like really quickly and in burst, I feel. Um, now what we had with the moon from going from Virgo into Libra and Jupiter being present there. Um, okay, Virgo is the sign of really your home life and your routines and your foundations kind of. Uh, so we have the moon going from that into Libra. Libra is the sign of relationships and connection to others and that type of energy. So what we have is Jupiter is there. Um, Jupiter is a planet of expansion and growth, higher education, philosophy, that type of energy and it's present in Libra, but it's in retrograde right now. So I feel like there's something in you that's changing in how you perceive your relationships and connection to others. You might, that might be one of the things that's rebirthing right now with the Aries energy. Um, kind of, you might be taking stock or what is the word? Reevaluating your relationships and what you bring to the relationships and what you're getting back out of it. So that's what's coming to mind just intuitively with the astrology. Let's get into the cards. Now I align myself with the Most High God and the Holy Spirit, Hecate. Please communicate the truth to me through these cards so that I may be guided for the highest good of all. Thank you. And so mode it be. Yes, I do have new tattoos now, in case you wondered. Um, I started doing hand poking tattoos, so I'm still learning, but I did some practice on myself. I still need to touch these up, though. Oops, what is that? Five of coins. Interesting. That might have some special relevance to somebody out there. Let me shuffle one more time. Okay. Please give us your divine guidance for this full moon and for this May Eve Sabbath so that we can use these energies for our highest good, greatest success, and joy. Thank you and so it be. Okay. I might have to rush through this because y'all know I have that 20 minute time limit on this camera. And we're already eight or nine minutes in. So I'll try to make this fast. It, if worse comes to worse, it will be a two part video. Okay, so the first card that we have, the Holy Father, also what's called the High Priest in traditional decks. This is representing us right now. This energy is about letting the status quo be shaken up, okay? This is an energy of change and transformation in social settings. So that actually perfectly fits with the astrology that I just said a minute ago, um, reevaluating your connection to others and relationships and that type of energy. Um, in the present position, we have the Maiden of Swords, also what's called the Page of Swords in traditional tarot. And this is the energy of new ideas coming in, new inspirations. Also, once again, exactly what I said in the astrology with um, Uranus and Aries. This is that inspiring new energy and new ideas and new projects.
techniques. Um, this could also be the communication of those. So maybe you need to share and brainstorm with others as well. Um, in the present position, this is encouraging you to do that. For the crossing card, the four of coins. So in this position, it's talking about um, being over possessive. So maybe some of these ideas you're keeping secret, you're keeping to yourself, you're hoarding them and treasuring them to yourself and you're not sharing them and giving them away. Because um, this is kind of a greedy energy. So don't let that block you from advancing. Um, what we get spiritually are gifts and we're supposed to share those with others. Okay, that's the reason why we receive them. So consider that and don't let it block your progress. Um, let me just add one more thing. It's like, it's kind of the same thing when you think about money, okay? Because what you receive, you're supposed to give out. You're supposed to, it's supposed to be a flow, okay? So if you're not giving what you receive, then you cannot receive anymore, okay? So that was just coming in before I get to the next card. The three of coins is our foundation. So what's important as we go into this full moon and into the Sabbath is basically what gives you joy. What do you enjoy to do? That could be work, but it could also be your hobbies and different things like that. Um, what do you enjoy to do and are you doing it? Okay. I feel like this um, is telling you get back into the flow. All right. In the past position, the Empress or Imperatrix in this deck. So this is that new energy, that creativity, that inspiration, um, that beautiful new life energy coming in. And it's showing up in the past position because it's saying this energy's already been bubbling up and coming in and has led into this moment. So uh, let yourself be inspired and man start manifesting whatever this energy is for you. Crowning us, the Six of Wands, excuse me. Um, the Six of Wands is crowning us. This is a card of attainment, victory, success. In this position, it means, you know, basically think positive, be optimistic, no um, negativity. There's been a lot of oppressive energy um, in the past few months, especially with the Mercury retrograde that recently passed and all of that. So uh, get out of that funk, get out of that rut of a negative thinking and get into a more positive mind frame. And think about how um, either others can help you attain success or how you can share your success with others and create more abundance in that process. That'll be important. So maybe you need to align your goals for this full moon and for the Sabbath, your manifestations, your intentions to be in a way that um, it's not selfish, but it's benefiting a multitude of people, including yourself. And the future position is the tower card. So this has been coming up in a lot of personal readings lately um, for clients. So there's something coming up here with this energy um, that's going to, you know, once again, with the High Priest card, it's going to shake up the status quo. This is your foundation being shaken, sort of. Um, but it's not negative because what happens with this energy is it strikes down and breaks down um, untruth, that which doesn't belong or which is unhealthy. And it leaves only behind, you know, what is true, what is healthy, and what becomes a new foundation for rebuilding. So, um, maybe you've already gone through the tower part of breaking down and this energy is just basically telling you it's time to rebuild now. And the attitude position is the lover's card. 
So what we have here is that we're being asked once again, I love all the synchronicities in this reading. We're being asked, what do you love to do? What is it that you enjoy? What are you attracted to in life? What really draws your attention and your soul to it? Whatever that is for you, start pursuing it. Start chasing after it. Let the world know what you love. That draws support from others who love it too. How others see you right now is as the uh, knight of coins. And this is the energy of you're making progress. Others see that you're making progress, that you are steadily making progress. You're not wavering off course. You know what you want and you're going after it. Um, also, they see that you are... A reliable person and this gives them courage and inspiration to go after their goals and manifest their dreams so you're very inspiring to others with this energy um, and that kind of goes along with the lover's card you know going after what you want shows others that they can do the same and the hopes and fears is the Nine of Wands. So this is going to be a fear, I feel. Uh, the Nine of Wands is about having a lot of work to do. A lot of irons in the fire. And this also means that you have come out of a difficult situation and you're feeling kind of defensive. But you need to kind of let your guard down, so to speak, and really get back into the flow, like I said, with, the, with these energies. Uh, don't be scared to try again. Don't be scared to pick things back up and uh, pursue it. And the final card is the Nine of Coins. This is a beautiful ending because the Nine of Coins is about your abundance, your prosperity, your independence, your self-reliance. This is you and in in your power um, on a physical level, um, this is, this is when you're spiritually balanced and empowered and it trickles down into the physical to empower you financially and materially. Okay. So this is a beautiful energy. So what I'm getting with all this together is that whatever these new ideas or new inspirations are that are coming into you, go with it. Let it just take you on a wild ride and it will lead you to this beautiful, abundant energy. Um, and that's great. That's a very great. So I feel like one more thing to add is just make sure that your goals are in alignment with really helping a lot of people or benefiting a lot of people, not just yourself. And that will bring and attract more success to you. Okay. So. I do feel like. I kind of rushed to this reading. But. The message is the same. And it stands. So. I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. At that. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for liking. Commenting. Sharing. Subscribing. All of that. And I look forward to doing my giveaway for the three for reaching the 3,000 subscribers. So I'll be doing that as soon as possible as well. And I'll be back with some more videos and more readings. Um, getting back into my own flow, so to speak, with my YouTube channel and all of that. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Things have been settling down for me. So it's going to be exciting. Um, I love you guys. Have an amazing full moon. Use it to manifest your goals and manifest your abundance for yourself and those you love and have a great may eve walpurgis night and beltane as well okay hell to the witches hell hecate and blessed be